Dear Dr. Haile, Mr. Harvisto, Chancellor, representatives of ministries, and colleagues in higher education. My name is Annika Sundbeck, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you all to this day of celebration. It's a day of celebration of results of increasing quality in higher education in Finnish-Eritrean collaboration. It's a celebration of results achieved in five projects during three years of intense and hard work. The journey started in 2014 with a networking event. And after that, there was a lot of joint planning and finding mutual interest and ground. After the selection of the five projects, an impressive amount of activities have taken place. Travels between the two countries, trainings, events, knowledge transfer, discussions, dialogue, obstacles identified and solutions found. Friendship has been made and I think I am not too wrong in saying that for many of the Finnish people present in the room today, Eritrea will always have a special place in our hearts. There is one person to whom we owe all these experiences and the mutual learning. Uh, a, re a resilient person who in 2014 had a great belief in the power of educational partnerships and in the special relationship between Finland and Eritrea. And I'm of course referring to the father of this Eritrea initiative, Mr. Pekka Haavisto, and I now invite you to start the line of the opening words. Thank you. And uh, for me also, it's good to be here and, and welcome Dr. Haile and uh, Professor Tsemenfis and, and also all other Eritrean colleagues. It's great to have so many of you in this hall today. And uh, I have only one request to you, Dr. Haile and, and Professor Tsemenfis, that when you go back to Eritrea, please uh, convince my friend Yemane Gebreab that sometimes it's sunny in Finland because <laughs> he always says that he cannot come to Finland because it's such bad weather there. <laughs> but now you have been proving, uh, uh, having an opportunity to see something good after the long winter. You know, we have been really suffering, I can tell you, of uh, this, this winter particularly has been quite dark and without sun, and, but you were bringing the sun, sun with you. Um, I know that this seminar uh, today goes very deep on the on the substance, so I'm not touching it. Maybe just a word about uh, the history of the cooperation. It was uh, <clears throat> I, I was already earlier regular visitor for for uh, Asmara and, and Eritrea for uh, various peace processes, Sudan and, and South Sudan and Darfur and so forth. But then 2013-2014, we started a discussion with. Uh, Eritrean authorities about the future of the Horn of Africa, about the uh, future of the young people there. Also at that time the, the uh, uh, migration issue was of the concern of the Eritrean authorities, it was of the concern of uh, international uh, community, what will, what, will, what will happen in the future. We all remember the sad news, the Lampedusa type of news from that region and, and in our discussion when we were thinking what could be the counter medicine to, to all this, actually only one issue came, came up and, and that was education and the quality of the education. And then that was the start of our, our cooperation and of course um, uh, I was very happy that the Finnish uh, 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 educational authorities and, and also the Finn Church Ed took then the initiative to, to start this work, people from the Finnish universities and, and uh, people from the Finn Church Aid and, and particularly with the Asmara Community College and with several uh, Eritrean universities started to work and, and I, I have already lost the count of the, all the variety of, of cooperation and different fields that we have been working, uh, working together. There has also been some quite creative in initiatives. I always remember when the young people uh, of Finland who visited the Sava 
uh, one year came back and, and, and full of enthusiasm, for example, told about this uh, innovation exhibition that is yearly organized in Sava. And I, I have been myself in the uh, Eritrean Institute of Technology in one of those innovation uh, innovation exhibitions and, and you know that we have in Finland SLAS, it's very posh event here with the young people deeply in the IT and new technologies but actually I could see the same spirit very much in, in, in Eritrea among the young people who were trying to create new technological innovations and, and, and wanted to to, to uh, put on show on, on, on everything that they have been involved and they have learned in the universities and, and high schools and so forth. It has been very, very impressive. So I, I think all these fields of cooperation are they're just waiting for us and, and uh, I hope that the future will be, will be bright on our uh, bilateral cooperation. Many people and, and many of the international colleagues have always asked that what is the secret of uh, Finnish Eritrean cooperation, that why, why things have been going, I would say, very smoothly and, and in a mutual understanding on these issues. And I don't know, it's very difficult to say one secret, but I, I, have, I have learned that um, the character of the Finns and Eritreans is very much to the same. You know, we don't want other people to meddle in our businesses. You don't want that to in Eritrea and we don't want that in Finland. We have also some uh, even tragic experiences of our neighbors. You with your big neighbor, us with our big, big neighbor. This kind of uh, feeling of independence is very important in both of our countries. And I think this also creates this uh, certain level of uh, mutual, mutual respect. And, uh, and I'm always saying that if you are involved in, in the normal development cooperation and the donor recipient work, forget all that when you go to Eritrea. It it's, doesn't work like that. That's my experience. You can do things on on equal basis, change information, discuss on the equal basis, but uh, but but that's that has to be the somehow the ground for the cooperation. And, and hopefully we have been successful on that. I, I can see the already the exchange of students and exchange of teachers and exchange of researchers and, and so forth between our country. And of course, I hope that that will go go ahead. Um, I, I think the, the, also the, the issue which is touching, which I started with the migration topic. We, in Finland, 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago, many of our relatives moved to US or Canada, inc including my own relatives going to the logging world to Canada seeking for a better life. Or 50 years ago, Finns went to Sweden to work in the Göteborg car factories and, and seeking for, for better life. So somehow, when we look to aspirations of the young people for looking for a better life, we understand uh, what, what, are the, what, are, what is probably the, the history and what is the background of, of all uh, that kind of uh, uh, ambitions and, and that kind of thinking. And again, maybe we can find together uh, best tools to, to, to address these issues. But of course, and, and this is my, my last comment on the Finnish Eritrea cooperation, uh, it has been very interesting also to see people who after their uh, staying in, in, in Europe or in Finland, they have moved back to Eritrea. We have a very famous musician, if some of you might, might know him, who, who is the heading nowadays the idols of, of Eritrea in Eritrean TV and who has this very interesting background that uh, he was sent, if I remember correctly, by a missionary organization to Sweden to study. And then they found out that Sweden is too expensive country though, so they moved him to Finland. <laughs> And, uh, and he told me about the, the, his history, actually, of being in, in Finland. Uh, first day, I think it was in Vasa. He didn't know anyone. It was quite cold. And, and he has this uh, nice uh, Afro hair, this gentleman. He still has it. And then he was walking alone on a cold street of uh, Vasa. And then somebody was going slowly in a car next to him and opening the window and shouting to him, Jimi Hendrix! <laughs> and uh, and this uh, gentleman said, well, then he knew that he has coming to a friendly country, <laughs> country like Finland. Hopefully, we can stay as friendly as as that time 
debate to, towards him. But uh, I, I think it has been uh, very, very interesting also to, to learn these cultural links and, and people who are involved in the cultures in, in Nordic countries and, and Finland and also in, in Eritrea. So with these words, I, I want to all wish you a very good, I want to wish to all of you a very good seminar today and I'm very happy to host Dr. Haile then later, later this evening so we can go more in an informal discussion as well today after the seminar. Thank you. Have a very good seminar. The Honourable Mr. Pekka Bisto, Member of Parliament. The Honourable Mr. Teresa Zeting, Director, Unit of uh, Horn of Africa and Eastern Africa, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mr. Uh, Samuel Cesalo, Director, Finnish National Agency for Education. Invited guests, members of the Eritrean delegation, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Eritrean delegation and myself, may I take this opportunity to extend my gratitude to the government of Finland, the Finnish National Agency for Education, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for inviting and support us, supporting us to participate in the dissemination uh, seminar held here in Helsinki. I am honored to be among you today in the dissemination seminar and share my brief views on the cooperation that has been going on between Eritrean institutions of uh, higher education and Finnish universities. Uh, the government of the state of Eritrea helps education center stage in all of its development policies, programs, and strategies. In line with this, the National Higher Education and Research Institute, formerly called the National Commission for Higher Education, taking its core policies, policy principles, namely access to access, quality, relevance, and sustainability, encourages and highly values partnership uh, with local, regional, and international actors to realize its policy and programs objectives. One such partnership is the very active cooperation that has been going on between the Eritrean Institutes of Higher Education and uh, Finnish universities since 2015. The partnership involved seven Eritrean colleges and four Finnish universities along with the Finnish Church Aid, engaged in uh, six projects that were jointly developed and implemented in the fields of education, agriculture, geoinformatics, and uh, uh, digital library and ICT for education. The total cost of the project is uh, around 2 million uh, euros and the projects are to mature in June 2018. It gives me a great pleasure to inform you also that a second phase of one of the projects, that's Education for All, has been granted and will continue until uh, the 31st of December 2019 under Education for All 2 or Alpha 2. The six projects that started in 2015 have successfully achieved their objectives and they will leave their imprints on the quality of education. They have contributed to improving the learning and teaching environment in the Eritrean partner institutions of higher education through library services, enhancing the pedagogical competence of Eritrean faculty, provision of advanced training at uh, PhD levels, development of research-based books, and laying the foundation of ICT-supported course delivery methods, among other things. We'll continue to track and assess the impacts of these projects on the quality of education provided in our college. The success of these projects is attributable, among other factors, 
the solid ground on which they were built, and the mutual respect, good understanding, trust, flexibility in implementation, effective communication, and the ability to cope with unforeseen challenges that prevailed among the parties throughout the course of the implementation. At this juncture, I extend my congratulations to all the parties involved in the six projects for upholding their obligations, responsibilities, and pledged resources. My admiration also goes to all project leaders and coordinators for their excellent managerial abilities. It is my sincere hope that the partnership started will not only be sustained, but also strengthened based on the experiences gained and that our cooperation in education will continue in one form or another. Lastly, I wish all participants of the seminar fruitful deliberations and interactions. Thank you for your attention. So good morning, everyone. Honorable guests, Dr. Heile, Professor Tsementsis, ladies, gentlemen, colleagues. <coughs> It is a great pleasure for me to meet with all of you today and take part in this very important occasion as we are celebrating the results gained through the higher education cooperation between Eritrea and Finland. I had the privilege of visiting the beautiful country of Eritrea some about eight years ago when I joined my ambassador in Nairobi where I was posted at that time as she pre presented her credentials to, to President of Verki of Eritrea. At that time, I do remember we had a long, excellent meeting and we were contemplating on various opportunities for cooperation between our two countries. So I'm very happy to stand here today with some concrete cooperation achieved together with you during these years. I'm especially honored to acknowledge the presence of our guests of honor namely our partners and delegation from Eritrea. I had the pleasure to meet with Mr. Haile Nitsu and Professor Tsemenfes already on Friday last week, and I warmly welcome you and the rest of your delegation once again to Finland. This time of the year, late in May, um, especially it's a good time to visit Finland, as already Mr. Haavisto mentioned, it's a uh, it's good to have summer, it's getting warm again. Thank you for bringing the good weather with you. Well, to start with, I would like to express my gratitude to the Finnish National Agency for Education, EDUFI, for hosting us today. On behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I would also la like to thank you for the excellent cooperation throughout the years and the dedicated work and administration of this program. I would also like to extend a warm thank you to the Eritrean and Finnish university coordinators and the project staff. Your expertise and dedication has truly been remarkable. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Pekka Havisto, a member of parliament and former special envoy of the Minister for Foreign Affairs. Mr. Havisto play, has played a crucial role initiating and strengthening the cooperation between Finland and Eritrea in the higher education sector, which was mentioned earlier by Annika. In, 1940, uh, sorry, in 2014, as the former Minister for International Development, Mr. Harvista took the initiative to activate the relations between Finland and Eritrea in this regard. As we all know, the Finnish Eritrea program on higher education institutional cooperation was launched in 2015 as five projects were selected to participate in the program. These projects have supported the training of Eritrean future teachers, strengthening the use of ICT and building digital library services in Eritrean universities, developing research on agriculture and food security and strengthening the geoinformatics teaching and research capacity in Eritrean universities. All these details will be much discussed in length today, I do believe. With great pleasure, I have learned that one of the projects, the Alpha project, 
has continued to a second phase with the funding from the Finnish Hey Iggy funding instrument. In addition to this, the Finn Church Aid will continue to focus on improving quality education through teacher training, curriculum development and school management in Eritrea. The commitment and genuine interest from all stakeholders throughout the program have been, has been overwhelming. We have had a number of visits from Eritrea to Finland and vice versa. While His Excellency Minister Rossom himself visited Helsinki in 2016, our Eritrean partners and counterparts have shown true professionalism throughout the program. You have worked hard in order to reach the common and shared goals of the program and your dem demonstrated ownership will be crucial for the sustainability of the project results. From the ministry, foreign ministry's point of view, the results of the program have carried much further than initially planned. The program has truly contributed to the deepening of the relations between Finland and Eritrea, and we value highly this friendship and close ties that have been established between our two countries. Finland has also supported a dialogue between Eritrea and Finland on the topic of rule of law, and most recently, in last December, the Ministry of Justice and Her Excellency Fautsa Hashim hosted a fruitful dialogue on this topic at the Ministry's premises and welcomed the former president of the Supreme Administrative Court of Finland, Mr. Halleberg, to lead the discussion. The different visits from Finland to Eritrea on, to be, on the topic of rule of law have been very important and mutual learning experiences offer for Finland. We highly appreciate the cooperation between Finland and Eritrea also on this matter. So today we are celebrating the friendship established through the higher education program, as well as the results and shared success that we should be all very proud of. I will finish by noting that Eritrea will remain an important partner for Finland. We are very much, much looking forward to continuing the fruitful dialogue between our countries, and together we will look at ways for possible further cooperation also in the future. Thank you. Dr. Heile, Professor Zemenfes, Pekka Havisto, dear friends and colleagues. Welcome to uh, Finnish National Agency for Education, EDUFI. We are really proud and happy to have you all, all here. It's a, it's a good audience and uh, I think we are discussing an important topic here. About Finnish Eritrea and higher education cooperation, I think this has been a unique cooperation in, in, in many ways. But uh, I would like to highlight the cooperation and commitment from both sides. I think from the beginning, the National Higher Education Research Institute in Eritrea and uh, EDUFI here in Finland have uh, been really committed to this uh, cooperation. And I think this has ensured a fruitful base for the cooperation. This has meant that the, the real actors, the universities, have had a, a much easier role for the cooperation. From the very beginning, uh, we have been discussing the goals uh, and the aims of the cooperation together. So uh, the commitment from, from both sides has been, has been uh, very strong from the beginning. And I think this is the reason why we are celebrating such a, uh, remarkable results from only from three years of, of cooperation. We, have, uh, we will hear several uh, examples of, of, of concrete uh, uh, results from the, from the, from the, from the projects. Uh, and, and Mr. Harvest was confirming that the sun is shining. Yes. <laughs> uh, you are such an op optimist person. Uh, so, basically, 
by, by, by saying that uh, by this unique cooperation, I think that the results have been excellent and I, I'm really hoping for the future cooperation. And I know that there are uh, already people that are thinking of cooperation, not only under uh, Hey Iki program, but otherwise as well. And uh, on behalf of EduBifi, we are really looking forward to receiving some applications for PhD scholars that would come from Eritrea to do part of their PhD work here in Finland. And uh, the pen is ready for the signature for granting the applications once they receive the tables here in EduFib. So uh, have a successful seminar, listen what the friends have to say, and we can learn from each other. Once again, well, welcome to Helsinki and Edufi. Thank you. Good morning, and distinguished guests from uh, from Eritrea and uh, local collaborating partners. It's really a pleasure to see so many of you here and to um, see the success of uh, your activities. Global impact together, that is the mission statement of the University of Helsinki. You may ask why, why global impact, why together? And uh, one has to just look around. If you look any anything what happens uh, in, in uh, the global world of 21st century. Everything is done together. Uh, we produce uh, all the products very fragmented in, in collaboration of one sort or another. And this is uh, the reaction to the question how to be competitive in the in the highly challenging and all, all the time changing world. And of course, this same applies to the universities. All the universities have to have a formal strategy, international strategy. We have to have a focus. Do we focus on high quality research? Do we focus on student exchange, mobility of the researchers? or just building up relationships. But we have to think about the, the focus. And how do we get to the focus? We have to have impact from the whole society. Uh, impact, first of all, of our staff and, and faculty and our students, but also impact from the all stakeholders, all the collaborating partners to to really focus on um, the, the deep core of the strategy. And while doing this, we would like to shortlist uh, the key projects. Uh, potential partners and our core activities have to match. We have to have a wide look of the global world and uh, um, focus on those partners who have um, input of the core activities that, that we identify from our own, uh, own activities. And how do we uh, focus to the um, strategic countries and strategic uh, universities? I think this has to come both bottom up and top down. We have to have uh, strong input from the academics, the actual uh, researchers, ed educators who are doing most of the work. And this is, I think, in the very core of, of these activities we now see between the Finnish and the Eritrean uh, uh, partners 
Uh, however, there may also be um, top-down approach if we look for uh, aspects like uh, common growth in, in economies or, or student potential, student quality, or just research output. There could be also a top-down approach for the selection of, of the key partners. And once we have the key partners, we have to have a capacity to sustain the relationship. We cannot have too many partners that are our strategic partners. They have to be uh, such in number that we can sustain the collaboration over long term. The list of partners, of course, can, can be renewed and has to be a process of all the time changing. But we have to think about future, how to sustain the partnership which we already started. So once doing all of this, the universities have created an international strategic agenda for, for their activities. And usually these strategies are uh, summarized, pinpointed in a strategic mission statement, global impact together, that's our statement. And you have to communicate this to the whole society that uh, everybody should know your own mission statement. Okay, now we have a strategy of the university. Why do we need a, uh, such an international strategy? Well, as I started, we have to be competitive. Everybody wants to be competitive. It is a uh, highly competitive area where we are working on within the higher education and research. And we, uh, looking for partnerships, we aim for uh, shared value, we aim for um, a global impact, which is beyond our reach on our own. And uh, we have higher impact if we have more partners, simply. It is shown in, in, um, in academic research that if you have collaborative actions, the, the, the publications have higher impact. They have higher citations. And this is very obvious. You put on more effort in your activities by, by linking with your strategic partners. So let me just finally say the collaboration is participating to make a dream come true. Thank you very much.